I need advice. Something is trying to kill me. I know that sounds paranoid, but let me explain. When I was five years old, I saw something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. If the dead man gets what he wants, that will be a very short amount of time. I'll come back to the specifics later. For now, I want to tell you where it all began. My dad owned a bread route near Ural, Texas for most of the 90s. We weren't well off, so once I was out of diapers, my mom had to go back to work as a waitress. I spent a lot of time in front of the boob tube the summer before I entered kindergarten. Mostly I watched old Disney stuff. Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, Robin Hood, and stuff like that. I remember one day in late May, it was unusually hot outside. Hot enough to make the trees sweat. As my grandpa used to say. My dad owned a Nintendo 64 that I wasn't allowed to touch. He used to let me play games with him sometimes, but I was never allowed to play games alone. In May of 1997, not many games had been released in the United States yet. I remember he had just gotten the game Killer Instinct Gold, and I so badly wanted to play it that I broke my dad's one rule. I blew in the cartridge, switched the system on, and saw the rare logo flash across the screen. Before the game could even boot up though, I heard a huge whooping howl. I'm not going to lie, I thought God was punishing me for my disobedience. I cannot stress enough how sequentially close these events took place. I turned on the game, and immediately a giant gust of wind wanted to knock our dumpy little mobile home off its cinder blocks. When I looked out the window, all I could see was this massive storm cell lumbering across the sky, a sort of angry, smoke-colored behemoth. Lightning was shooting out of the cloud like streamers at a 4th of July celebration. To make a long story short, I saw what is now known in tornado circles as the Ural F5 Double Vortex Tornado. I caught it right before it tore through the Double Creek Estates and it raised 27 lives, including three whole families. Needless to say, it was a devastating blow to the community. Anyone familiar with this twister will probably know it by a different name. The Walking Dead Man. It got this name because when two vortexes form, the result looks a bit like a man walking across the sky. Look it up. There are pictures online that will make your hackles stand on end. It's rumored that the name Walking Dead Man was coined by the Native Americans that lived in the Great Plains going back hundreds of generations. But I have yet to find any verifiable evidence of this suggestion. Best I can figure, the legend was made up for TV. But made up or not, it stuck. My older sister was in school when it happened. She lives in Colorado Springs now. I haven't seen her in six years, but I can still hear her nagging voice teasing me. You've seen the dead man walking. Now he's coming after you. Nobody sees the dead man walking and lives. He always comes for the damned. By now you probably understand why I don't have a good relationship with my sis. She probably thought they were harmless little jabs, but the truth is, I think she was right. Whether the legends are true or not, something has been after me ever since. My dad helped clean up the community, and that's when the weird stuff began. He used to come home after long days of salvaging, and he and my mom would go into the bedroom and talk for hours. I learned later that my dad's search party found some disturbing stuff from the carnage, including human remains twisted beyond recognition, over 100 metal boxes full of a substance that smelt like sulfur, and half a dozen human skulls, despite there being no graveyard within the community. The city ran lab tests on one of the skulls and found out that it was at least 50 years old. Where it came from has been a mystery all these years. I like to think that it was from an unmarked grave, 
but my sister has hypothesized that the tornado may have uncovered the secret stash of an unknown serial killer. Anyway, my father moved our family to Minnesota a year after the storm. In 1999, while my friends and family gathered around me to sing happy birthday in front of my cake, the kitchen window exploded, throwing shards of glass directly into my sister's face. She still has the scars. They look like claw marks carved from her chin to her forehead. Before she could scream, the air filled with an electric crackle. An orb of light floated above my cake for nearly ten seconds. Nobody spoke. After a moment, my grandma asked if one of the helium balloons we bought from Walmart had gotten too close to the candles. As she was speaking, the orb popped in a powerful blaze of sparks and heat. I felt my eyebrows melt off my face. My skin started to peel back. I cupped my face in my hands and fell to the floor, crying. I learned later that what we saw is called ball lightning. It's an extremely rare phenomenon. In fact, only about 1% of the population will ever witness lightning in ball form, according to several online articles. When I was 15, I took a missions trip to the Congo, where we helped build a school in a remote lakeside village. However, just 30 minutes after we left in the puddle jumper, the lake, which was filled with carbon dioxide, exploded and leveled the village, killing everyone. The next encounter is the most unbelievable of them all. When I was 17, I was on a road trip across South Dakota. A thunderhead had followed us across most of the state, and just before we entered Wyoming, it let loose a fury of lead pellets, rain that ripped through my car like bullets. The storm killed two of my friends, but my future wife and I were saved after crawling into a culvert under the road. I still don't know if we stumbled upon a military experiment or just a freak natural phenomenon. In college, I studied crisis and disaster management. I did this out of a sense of duty. To be honest, I've always had an interest in writing. Growing up, I always wanted to be a novelist, but after all my terrible and frankly supernatural encounters with weather, I put that dream aside. Or rather, it was put aside for me. It feels selfish to pursue a career in writing or anything that doesn't involve helping people who suffer from natural disasters, especially considering all the people that have been injured or killed for the simple crime of getting a little too close to me. As an adult in my 20s, I joined the Anglican Relief and Development Fund. I mostly stick to the United States, but sometimes we go into Canada if the disaster is close enough to an Anglican community. I don't want to bore you with more long-winded stories, so I'll simply ask that you believe me when I say that something is out to get me. I've seen strange fire, hail the size of volleyballs, undertow strong enough to knock me off my feet in only two feet of water, sinkholes, landslides, rogue waves on Lake Superior, sharks in the Mississippi, and straight winds strong enough to rip the bark off oak trees. My wife got so scared of being around me that she moved to Hawaii, where she knows I will never go. She said I was like a magnet for bad weather. If I could even survive the ocean trip, I'd probably trigger a huge volcanic eruption or something. As you can imagine, it's been a lonely couple of years. This is why I need advice. Right now, I live in northwestern Minnesota. The weather doesn't get too out of control up here. We get blizzards and cold snaps and flash floods and lightning, but that's about it. I lived in a cabin until a few months ago. I came home late after a night at the local bar and found my whole cabin had washed into the lake after the hillside gave way. 
Luckily, my dog must have let himself out at some point, or he would have drowned. I've been living out of a hotel room ever since, but I'm getting nervous. I keep thinking I'll come home from the grocery store one of these days and find the place engulfed in flames. I need suggestions on what to do and where to go. I own a truck and a dog. Most of my earthly belongings were in the cabin, which took a dip in the lake. I've got a little money in the bank, and I try to keep my expenses low. I took a break from my job, so I'll have some time to get my life in order. I'm recording this here because I don't have a lot of friends. Not because I'm too awkward or weird. I'm a pretty easygoing guy when you get to know me. But I've seen so many of my friends get hurt or even killed that I purposely avoid friendship now. I just don't know what to do. Where should I go? How can I protect myself, and more importantly, protect the people who just happen to be around me? Any suggestions are appreciated. Help at your own risk. The walking dead man doesn't leave many survivors.